Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Chromatographic, the show in which I, Matt, the Game Boy, take you through the highs and lows of the Game Boy Color Library, one cart at a time. This week, we're continuing May Forward with one of my favorites. It's Sabrina Zapped. One long-time Way Forward collaborator has so far been absent from our tale about the history of the company, and that's Aaron Bozone, the creator of Shante and wife of Matt Bozone. Erin, also a Cal Arts graduate, met Matt at school in the early 90s. It was in 1994 when she asked herself a question that would spawn the now beloved series. If I was to make a video game, what would the character do? With a handful of ideas about hair whips, animals and dancing, Erin showed Shante to Matt and the two of them began to flesh the concept out. Originally wanting to develop the game for the Super Nintendo, the Bazones toyed with the idea of a PC release for Shante before deciding on the Game Boy Color. While the couple had been pitching Shante outside of Way Forward, with the tech in place thanks to Extreme Sports, John Beck informed Matt that if they were to make Shante, he was sure he could find a publisher for it, with Valdi also giving the project the green light. Erin joined the Way Forward team, as well as programmer Jimmy Huey, to begin working on the game full time. There was one caveat to the game's green light, however, and that was in order to make Shante's development possible, the team would have to develop licensed titles to keep the bills paid, allowing them whatever free time they could find in between to work on Shante. While it is true that Way Forward worked on WCW Mayhem as its first Game Boy Color license, the first licensed game on the system to ship with the Way Forward logo in the title cards was based on Sabrina the Animated Series which was running at the time on ABC. While billed as a spin-off to the popular Sabrina the Teenage Witch live-action show, the animated Sabrina is actually based more off of the character's Archie comic origins. Joining Erin and Matt to work on the game was Larry Holdaway, a now veteran programmer for Way Forward. Not to mention some other names that would eventually lend a hand in the creation of the original Shante, like Jeff Clark and Cole Phillips. But despite this, I know some of you might have raised an eyebrow when you saw this video in your feed. How could a Game Boy Color licensed game based on an animated TV show for girls possibly be any good? It's a view I've unfortunately seen reflected in articles I found online from the time of the game's release, and I know I sure as hell received eye rolls when I picked up my copies of this game and its sequel, Sabrina Spooked, a few years ago. But my dear viewer, if you fell into this trap, please let this video serve as a lesson to you. Just because the box is pink, the player character is female, and the game is based on a license, doesn't mean you're not going to be into it. In fact, I guarantee by the end of this video, some doubters amongst you will see why you should have had this game in your collection all along. The premise is a simple one. At a school talent show, Sabrina is bombing on stage. Goaded by Salem to use her magic to entertain the crowd, Sabrina casts a spell that goes horribly awry, turning the whole audience into animals. Give you going through four different locations, each with four levels, to turn your classmates back from snakes, bats and rhinos into their human forms. How do you do this? Well, by platforming, of course. The game's 16 levels are all mazes containing your classmates. While the first level at school can simply be solved by jumping on the animals' heads, holding down B to use your magic to transform them back to normal, then finding the level's exit, it'll soon become apparent to you that there is more to this game than you think. On the second level, the player will encounter Salem for the first time by opening one of the various gift boxes hidden around the stage. By pressing the select button, you can switch to Salem, allowing you to enter narrow passageways that Sabrina can't get into by herself, or he's used to break blocks Sabrina can't destroy. Besides using Salem to gate the player's progress, scattered around the stages are also other gift boxes, containing hearts to restore Sabrina's health, and stars that once all five are collected, allow Sabrina to zap her classmates back to their original form without the need to jump on their heads. But there is also the option of picking up one of the game's four unique power-up spells. There's a hover jump, allowing Sabrina to quad jump to reach higher platforms, a crush spell, which is a butt stomp for breaking through blocks, a bubble spell that, by pressing up on the D-pad, allows Sabrina to float upwards, reverse bubble bobble style. There's also a teleport spell in the later levels that allows Sabrina to travel through specifically marked blocks. In what I think is an incredibly smart design choice, 
These power-up spells don't carry on with the player to the next stage, but instead need to be located again in each level. This might sound counterintuitive, but it actually allows for a much clearer progression path for the player. If a level doesn't need you to bubble, you won't find that power-up, meaning you don't waste your energy trying to brute force the stage. Instead, you can look at a level design objectively and say, OK, I can see there's a Salem block here, I need to locate him and then come back here as I bet the crush spell I need to reach the exit is on the other side of this wall. Hopefully, by now, the penny has dropped, dear viewer. Sabrina Zapped is actually a level-based Metroidvania. Instead of a morph ball and a bomb, you've got Salem. The other in-level power-ups also gate your progress in the same way you would expect from an Ice Beam or a Leap Stone to do but in a palatable way that younger gamers can understand. In this vein, the game is very good at taking you by the hand and guiding you through how to do everything. The school introduces you to the basics of saving your classmates, amping up the difficulty a little on the beach festival stages by bringing in tougher enemies and introducing butt stomping, with the mall becoming more labyrinthian and teaching the player how precise you need to be with the bubble spell. The game's final zoo area is then a culmination of all the player has learned with bigger stages and difficult enemies that don't go down with one head bop. Not to mention levels requiring all four spells plus Salem to conquer. In fact, the only bad thing I have to say about this game is that there are only 16 levels of this Metroidvania style puzzle platforming and not more of it. I'd even have settled for just four more levels where the game could let loose, up the difficulty and really put the player through their paces. But sadly, this isn't the case. Between the game's locations, there are some small boss encounters in order to turn back Sabrina's named classmates like Harvey and Chloe. These boss fights are also of a pretty high standard, with some basic attack patterns to look out for and gorgeous sprite work, though yet again, their difficulty level will mean you're going to have very little trouble defeating them. Though, it's worth mentioning that despite how easy Sabrina looks, you will probably die a couple of times while playing through it if you're not patient enough. Dotted around the levels besides the enemies are pit traps that insta-kill, and while jumping as Salem especially, you need to be very careful you don't fudge the landing. There was a few times where I experienced an odd bit of jank to the jump mechanics after running, but it was too inconsistent to say exactly what caused it. Either way, just be patient and you'll get through the levels just fine. If you do die after a few jumping mishaps, rest easy in knowing that the game has unlimited continues and a password system if you want to take a break. Graphically, as you can see, the game looks great. There's a large variety of sprites and a high level of detail in both the level backgrounds and the animation to make each location a pleasant place to platform. The music is decent, but the drum sound you sounds very staticky and to my ears at least, creates a real dissonance with the otherwise chirpy melodies. All in all, I think Sabrina Zapped is, dare I say it, a hidden gem for the system. What it lacks in terms of difficulty, it more than makes up for in charm and clever level design. Just try not to think about the in-game ethics of whether it's better to view the enemies you're jumping on as animal or children, and you will have a whale of a time. It's not the longest game on the system, but I'll take a tightly crafted experience like this over half the other games in the Game Boy Color library. Thanks to this title getting released in Europe as well as in the American market, copies of it are relatively easy to come across. And good news Europeans, the game also has some language options for the French and German amongst you, making it extra child friendly for some regions. I look forward to seeing if Sabrina has managed to cast a spell over you. And that brings us to the end of this episode of Chromatographic, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you've enjoyed. Huge thank you again to everyone at Way Forward, and be sure to stick with us when I'm back next week with another May Forward episode. Until then, game boys and girls, game on. <laughs>